Hi, I'm Duncan Charman. I've come to the, the River Lodden today. A few hours roving around the swims I know. Target species is a barbel. It's not the easiest river in the world anymore. It's got really tough, the fish are very localised. But you just have to keep moving around with a trusted method, dropping it in each swim, giving it 20 minutes and then moving on. As I say, you know, it's not the easiest. Any barbel today would be, you know, a result probably get the chance of a chub and hopefully the crayfish won't be too much of a problem so uh, I'm going to drop in one of my favourite swims and see if I can get one in the, you know straight away. Again, I've just dropped in one of my favourite swims here. It's quite a good chub swim. You probably get as many chub as barbel in this swim. Not the best, so, uh, you know, it's much, much better in the depths of winter. But I've gone in there, I've just dropped the pellet lead in there and within 30 seconds, bang, and I've just lost a chub. It didn't feel very big, but I think it was enough to actually spook them because I've gone in again, had another bite, missed that again. And I think all they're doing, what's happening is the chub just get hold of the bait, not the hook, they just pull it and uh, the chances are I'm going to sit there and waste my time now. So although there's chub there, I'm just going to give them half an hour, a couple of hours, go upstream and uh, I might drop back in there on the way back. Literally that took seconds in a swim. I don't think it's a barbel, it's a chub. Might be a little barbel. That's oh, a little barbel. A little barbel actually. Which is good to see in the lodden. Come on you. Literally just tried, dropped it in there. I thought it was a chub bite. Well tip's gone round and I think I'm gonna smallest barbel I've caught for many times on the Lodden. And there she goes. Well there you have it, not the uh, Lodden specimen I was hoping for, but probably the smallest one I've had for probably a decade or more. Tiny little barbel, great sign for the future that the river's doing well. This one may well have been stopped, it may well be a recruitment from the larger ones in here but uh, any barbel on the lodden nowadays is a result you've got to understand that I'm really happy with this one because one it shows you know it's great for the future that these small fish are here and uh, you know it's a bite on a method that I've used for so many years now and it just keeps producing the goods I haven't been here for a little while third swim bang bite within about oh, 30 seconds actually so keep moving around and hopefully we'll get a bigger one later Well, I've had that small barbel and uh, I've tried a couple of other swims. I had a good knock in one, but obviously didn't come to anything. Crayfish are being a bit of a pain today. All the baits are nibbled away. And I've also just went upstream to a swim and I've noticed that anglers are arriving now. It's getting that time after work when they arrive. So I'm not gonna be able to move around too much longer. So I've come downstream into a swim that I know contains fish. I actually primed it a couple of, you know, a couple of hours ago with a couple of handfuls of pellet. So I'm gonna drop a bait down there and probably give it a little bit longer. Um, because, you know, if I go upstream now, I never know if I'm dropping in swims other people have been in. And that's pretty much a recipe for disaster. You need to be the first one in the swim. I'm gonna run through my rig as well and the tackle I'm using. I'm using a barbel rod here, 12 foot barbel rod. It's a 125 test curve and I've got a real with 10 pound line on. Now that 10 pound line is really, it's Gardner Hydra Flow and it normally breaks more like 14 pounds. So 12 pound is probably a good, a good, you know, line strength. I've set my clutch, as you can see, I've got to give that a good yank. One of the main 
fallbacks or people lose fishes, they don't set their clutches either too loose or too hard. You've got to make sure it's set right. I simply do it by putting a hook in my rucksack, walking away, putting a bend in my rod until the clutch goes. Obviously, you know, you will know then the bend in your rod, that's too tight or that's too, too slack and just tighten up accordingly. Gives you a good starting point. Um, and you've got, as I said, you've got to trust your tackle, whether it's a pound and a half barbel like I caught earlier or a 15 pound barbel. They're all going to test your, your, you know, your tackle to a limit, especially them about seven pound. Again, 10 pound main line, 10 or 12. I've got a one ounce or 1.1 ounce little grip of lead and as you can see that's running. The reason I've got it running is it gives me all the little knocks and liners and chub pulls. It tells me what's in the swim as well as crayfish. A little quick change bead there and then I've got a hook link there, you know, quite a long hook link here because this swim means I want to get it under the trees. So I'm using a slightly longer hook link than the normal 12 inches. This one's, you know, 18, 20 inches. It's 10 pound sink braid. It's just a lovely fin braid, it just sits on the deck. And I've got a Nash size eight fang gaper on there and a small, small boily there with a bait stop and that's it. And I'm gonna put some scalded pellet around the lead and just carefully drop that in on the surface, let it go until it hits the bottom. You'll see the line shoot across the surface. As soon as it stops, click over the bail arm, put your rod down, get a tiny little you know, bend in the rod tip and then just wait. Sooner or later that bite will come. In my kind of light experience, the first five minutes in a swim is the best. If you're sat in there for 30 minutes, the chances are there's not a hungry fish in. It's time to get up, move to the next actual swim. So keep moving about, go find them, because on the lot nowadays, they ain't gonna come to you. With people arriving, I'm gonna have to sit in a swim for a little bit longer than I would normally. So what I'm gonna do, instead of holding the rod, I've just put this little backrest in. And as you can see, the rod is really stable there. So if I'm not gonna be able to put my hand on the rod or if I go for a cup of coffee and the rod goes, there's no way this rod can get towed in. All it's gonna do is the rod tip's gonna go around and pull the hook into that barbel's mouth a little bit firmer and also slow it down. So, you know, I pretty much forget about front rod rest. I lay them on the, you know, the ground, try and get the rod tip down and just secure it in there. Very important. If you don't, chances are you can look away and your rod can be in the river. Here we go. I primed this swim a little while ago, straight in there, and there's some chub in there. And as you can see, I've got a bit of a decent chub here. It's not fighting much. Not a bad chub for this time of year. Look at the size of the gob on there. Yeah, almost go straight in. Get the net under him in this. Well, there you have it. Nice chub caught on the barbel rig, the pellet lead. I literally primed this swim earlier. And then as soon as I knew people were arriving, I thought it's time to get down there. They've got some confidence. There might be a barbel get in between the chub, but obviously oh, straight in, rod tip straight away. I knew there was chub there, no crayfish. That's how quick she came. So you've got to understand when you drop that bait in, there's a hungry fish about, be ready, because I reckon that was two minutes and the barbel pretty much was for about 30 seconds. More, more actual swims you cover, the more, more fish you're going to catch, so time to get this one back. Well that's the end of that short session on the River Loddon. I got here at one o'clock, there was nobody here. I've moved around, done eight swims I think it has it is now, eight swims in total. Had three chances, lost a small chub, caught that chub probably three pound plus, and that really small barbel, which, you know, although it's not the biggest, if I can catch the smallest, the next bite, you know, it might be the biggest. I've caught a lot of double figure barbel up here, you know, so you just gotta play the numbers game and you've gotta get as many bites as you can. The pellet lead, brilliant actual method, you just gotta keep moving around. All my bites came pretty much within a couple of minutes of dropping it in a swim, so keep moving you know and the more you move the more bites you get hope you enjoyed the video catch you next time